Wisdom calls aloud. Proverbs 131. So they will eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the waywardness of the simple shall slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell in safety, secure from the fear of evil. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will scoffers delight in their scorn and fools hate knowledge? How long? The iniquities of a wicked man entrap him. The cords of his own sin entangle him. O oh, you simple, learn to be shrewd. O oh, you foolish, gain understanding. But he who fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. Isaiah 60 verse 4 says, So I will choose their punishment. I will bring terror upon them. Because I called and no one answered. I spoke and no one listened. But they did what was evil in my sight and chose that in which I did not delight. So, last night I had a very intense spiritual dream. I'm going to call it the, um, I'm going to call it Satan's Slaughterhouse. Just based on the title, um, you could probably tell that it's, it was pretty intense. Of course, um, I don't remember every single details. I just remember I just remembered a few vivid parts and the message and the meaning. Um, and I believe it is the heart of God showing us, revealing to us His word and um, what the kingdom of darkness, the enemy is doing um, in the spiritual realm and revealing the mysteries of darkness as well as the mysteries of light and life through the word of God just as his word says but whoever listens to me will dwell in safety secure from the fear of evil not listen to me but listen to the word of God the spirit of the Lord in the dream I remember um, seeing a young man he was going into like looked like a little like restaurant um, and there wasn't you know many people in there just the owner of the place looked like a house restaurant little bar something and he was just going in there, you know, not thinking about anything, just getting him uh, something to eat. Um, and um, I was shown, you know, in, my, in the spirit that I also went in there just to be a witness. I wasn't in there to get anything. I didn't need anything. And um, I think he just ordered, you know, probably some typical um, burger or something off the typical American menus. Um, so as he was waiting, the owner, who wore all black, um, you know, began to prepare, like pretending to prepare uh, the dish that the guy ordered. But um, instead, he went to sharpen his blade. And it looked like a long, large knife of some sort, like this long, the blade. And he was sharpening it, sharpening it. And um, the guy was just sitting at the bar, um, bar stool, uh, waiting at the bar for his order. You know, not expecting anything except waiting for his uh, food to come out. And then all of a sudden, the evil owner began to whack him on the back of the head with the sharp blade. And the guy was just like, you know ouch like what the heck you know um 
and the evil owner continued to sharpen his blade and did it like three more times. At this time, I realized like, oh my goodness, he is going to be slaughtered to death. And um, I, my spirit left from there knowing exactly what was gonna happen, that he was gonna be slaughtered, butchered to death. And then my spirit was made to know and saw that this owner was not like a regular normal human being because no normal human being could do that. Um, but he was actually like a demonic entity, pure hatred, pure evil. Like there's not an ounce of him, uh, not an ounce of humanity in him. And then as I was fleeing to that slaughterhouse, he was shouting out as he, as he was uh, sharpening his blade um, to continue with his evil business, uh, you know, whacking, chopping up that man, destroying him. He shouted out, those who will not walk in the spirit will end up, I don't know if he said destroyed or slaughtered, I don't remember what he said, but he shouted out specifically that those who does not walk in the spirit live by the spirit walk in the spirit will end up being slaughtered being destroyed and so that was what i heard loud and clear as i was fleeing the scene the slaughterhouse then i also saw like um a man in like slacks and a nice shirt he was like probably in his late 30s 40s and he was going in there too and of course my spirit knew now what that house was all about so i went to go look for him in hope to save him and hope to warn him but by the time i got there it was too late and he was it's hard to explain what i saw was he was carved into like a a piece of wood of a man and beast, that man that walked in there as a human was carved into a lifeless piece of wood, piece of like idol, piece of lifeless wooden idol between man and beast looking. And I knew that it was too late for him. He, he was done with. So I don't understand exactly what that part meant. I just knew that he was done with. And then I remember seeing myself and my youngest son fleeing from that slaughtered house. I made sure that my son Ethan was safe away from the slaughtered house. And then I remember seeing a young woman. Um, she was probably late, late, late teen or early, early 20s. And she was in the slaughterhouse, lifeless. Like, she could not walk, could not move, like paralyzed. Like, she was a victim um, of this demon and was waiting to be slain, to be slaughtered, to be horrifically tortured and put to death. I was free from the slaughterhouse, but I ran back inside and I got down on the ground with all my might because I couldn't carry her and she was lifeless, but not dead yet, but lifeless, couldn't move. So I got down on the ground on my knees and hands and I began to push her. I tried to push her out of the slaughterhouse, trying to save her because my heart went out to her. I was filled with compassion and sadness knowing her fate if I didn't get her out of there. So with all my might, I began to push this lifeless young lady out, you know, of the slaughterhouse. And then the demon man with the black that was doing all the killing, the slaughtering, came to me and tried to kill me. But um, he didn't have the power to touch me. He didn't have... He had no power, no control over me. And I don't know if I was able to get that 
lifeless young lady out or not because that demon was trying to attack me and somehow I got free and got away unharmed and um, so there were more to the dream that I cannot remember but I just remember the message that that demon shouted as he was killing the first man and as he was shouting to me sh uh, sharpening his blades and I want to share the scriptures, the scriptures from that. According to what he said. So Romans 6.21 says, The fruit did you reap at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed. The outcome of those things is death. He's talking about sowing into the flesh, sowing into sins, a lifestyle full of sin. Romans 8, 6 says, The mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace. That demon shouted that only those who live by the spirit, walk by the spirit, will escape the slaughterhouse. Um, Romans 8, 12 says, Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. What is the works of the flesh that we all must repent and turn from? Well, the Bible is very clear. In Galatians 5, 19, 21 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, sex before marriage, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, if we die in our sins, living in any of these things, and there's other besides these, um, besides this list we will end up in Satan's slaughterhouse spiritually we will end up with the fallen angels the Antichrist and the false prophet all who rebel and will not turn from their iniquity will not turn from sins falsehood, idolatry, unbelief we will end up in Satan's slaughterhouse and we don't have time to go through what hell is like and some of the slaughterhouse on earth that's erected by Satan are like bars strip clubs and um, like when we were deployed to Guam Guam is a beautiful tropical island uh, four by eight miles not very big at all but I kid you not the first morning I woke up in Guam, to the left was a beautiful ocean, turquoise water, tropical island, beautiful paradise to the left. And then I looked to my right across the street, it said Club USA, Club USA. It was a strip club, like literally, I don't know, 500 feet, 1,000 feet from the resort that we were living at. And then I also noticed while there for 15 months, right outside the post of the naval base, immediately there's like bars, bars galore with uh, advertisements of, you know, women in bikinis, skimpy bikinis. And I thought to myself, and that was 2015, 2016, I thought to myself, there is no soldiers without God, that does not fear God, does not love God, can resist these temptations set up in front of the Naval Army uh, Station, um, Air Force Station. You know, think about it. You've got men and women that are super young. Most are addicted to alcohol, and they're out there 
away from their wives, their children, their families and friends. They're lonely. They get drunk. It's right there. And then they go out clubbing. Those are Satan's slaughterhouses. So that's just to name a few. Um, I thought about that this morning when I had this dream. So only those who walk in the spirit will escape Satan's slaughterhouse. Okay. Now in the book of Revelation, it talks about um, during the great tribulation that the beast from the bottomless pit will be unleashed to destroy, to torment men for five months. And we also know that God has a day of slaughter coming at the end of the tribulation where he will slaughter every single human being from every nation, tongues, and tribes that has made themselves to be his enemy. So there are days of slaughters coming. Satan has one coming, God has one coming. So how do we avoid? Well, it's simple. We come to Christ, our only hope. We repent, turn from our sins, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, receive his Holy Spirit, and we follow him until the end. Now, Colossians 3, 5 says, Put to death, therefore, the components of your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Romans 8, 1, 4 through 6 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What's the law of the spirit that frees us from condemnation? Those who walk in the spirit are free from condemnation. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, oh sorry, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law, no condemnation. Amen. All right. Romans 6, 21, 23 says, What fruit had ye then in those things where of ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gifts of God is Jesus Christ, his son. Through Jesus Christ, his son. And where's that verse at? All right. So Romans 8, 2 says, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So if we walk in the fruit of the Spirit for 23, where did it go? Okay. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, then we will live. That's basically what that demon was saying. But if we live in the flesh and we do not put to death the deeds of the flesh, sin, we will end up in Satan's slaughterhouse. Spiritually, and if you're here during the Great Tribulation, physically. physically. All right. But if a wicked person turns away from all the sins they have committed and keeps all my decrees and does what is just and right, that person will surely live. Michael makes all that noise. He start over. But if a wicked person turns away from all the sins they have committed and keeps all my decrees and does what is just and right, 
that person will surely live they will not die hallelujah none of the offenses they have committed will be remembered against them because of the righteous things they have done they will live do i take any pleasure in the death of the wicked declares the sovereign lord rather am i not pleased when they turn from their ways and live god does not take any pleasures in the death of the wicked he desires that all would come into repentance and receive his gift of forgiveness of sins and the gift of salvation the gift of his holy spirit without the holy spirit there is no hope for any human being we need the holy spirit and god only gives his holy spirit to those who obey him those who repent and turn from sins and turn to his son jesus christ and then he will give us his holy spirit a failure to repent can be damaging and damning according to the bible these are consequences to refusing to repent one sins but because of your stubbornness and your unrepented heart you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of god's wrath when his righteous judgment will be revealed romans 2 5 but unless ye repent you too will perish luke 13 3 and that's out of the mouth of jesus he said that amen so i just want to exhort you encourage you that um if we live by the spirit we will not perish but we will reap eternal life in christ father i ask that you would pour out your spirit lord upon all of us our sons and daughters lord upon all who will repent and turn to you father i ask that you would pour out your holy spirit upon us baptize us with your spirit and fire god give us holy boldness courage and holy desires lord to live for you lord a holy hatred for sins and for all forms of darkness deception perversion in the mighty name of jesus we thank you lord for your mercy we thank you lord jesus for your blood we thank you holy spirit lord for your gift of living water of eternal life of wisdom of power might counsel understanding knowledge revelation lord and the fear of the lord May the fear of the Lord be upon us in the name of Jesus. Amen.